Salvete discipoli. Welcome back to day two of assembly. We are just going to jump right in. So hopefully you remember from yesterday that we are learning this week about the great ancient city-states of Greece. Now remember, Greece was a civilization. They had many things in common. They spoke the same language, they had the same gods, they dressed the same. But each city-state was also individual. And it was within those walls of protection where the people lived that they had their own set of values. And I really want you to start listening today and tomorrow and Friday for the ways that those values were different between the city-states. Okay, specifically, here are a few things you can look for. Virtue. I want you to look at the virtues that each city-state considered the most important. And an easy one to pick out is our virtue for this month, which is courage. So I want you listening for the city-state the values courage or other virtues that you can think of. Okay, virtue. Then another thing I want you to listen for is how their culture is reflected in ours. So the culture of the United States and Europe, what we call Western civilization, is very much shaped from ancient Greece. And I want you listening for the things that ancient Greece valued that we still value today. And then the third thing I want you listening for is their approach to the human person. So at DMA, we like to say we're educating you body, mind, and soul. And I want you to listen for how the ancient Greeks in their different city-states looked at those three parts of the person and chose to focus on them. Okay, so virtue, how our cultures are similar, body, mind, and soul. Now today, we're going to start looking at the two most important. And here's a little bit of a challenge for you. I want you to listen for what they did right. Remember, all of these cultures we studied before Jesus didn't have Jesus, so they didn't have the fullness of truth, but they had that mark on their hearts, that part of them that was calling out for God, searching for God, and some of the things they did reflect that call. So I want you really listening for what they did right and how they were searching for God. You'll find there's things they did wrong. In Athens, if you owed someone a debt, they could put you into slavery until they felt you paid it back. Not good. In Sparta, if they captured you, they made you a servant, a slave, but gave you a different name. Not good. So there were many things that changed when Jesus came on the scene, but there were many things they did right before he got there. And I want you to listen for them. Okay, so we're gonna jump in. Here's the big two city-states, the most important. The big guy is Athens. Okay, they consider themselves the greatest city-state and actually, a lot of the other city-states did as well. They said, we have the best poetry, we have the best drama or plays, we have the best literature or stories, and we have the best schools. And actually, several of our fathers that have named our houses this year, like Hippocrates and Plato, lived in Athens. That was where a lot of the main thought and art came out of, was that city-state. So, education super important in Athens. In fact, they started what's become classical education, which is what we do here at DMA. So their way of learning, their way of teaching children from a young age and progressing them as they got older is what we try to mirror with our education at DMA and a lot of other schools. Now, the girls got to learn to cook and to sew and to run a house and to be a wife and to be a mom. They didn't get to go to school. They didn't learn to read and write. Okay, boys got to go to school and they got to memorize poetry. And I tell my kids, what we memorize shapes our souls. And the Athenians understood this. They understood that what you learned and what you could think about shaped who you were. So they memorized beautiful poetry. They learned to play an instrument. They learned to speak in front of people. They learned to read. They learned to write. And they learned to do plays. They loved to put on plays. So these are the things that you would do in school as a boy. And then if you were the son of a nobleman, so one of the more important people in the city, you could go on to high school. And that's where they would go into sciences and arts and politics and learning how to help run the government. So schools are very important. It shaped their society. It shaped who they were. And they knew that, and so they did that on purpose. Now we can look at that and we can say, look how blessed we are. All of us have the chance to go to school. It doesn't matter for girls or boys. All of us get to go to high school and continue our learning. But it's a part of Greece from Athens that we've taken and built on now in our society. Um, and then I want you to think about why that happened. Who came to earth and changed how we treated people? 
and that was Jesus. So when Jesus came on the scene, he unveiled for us the dignity of the human person. How important each person was, rich, poor, man, woman, it didn't matter. He said, all of us are children of God and therefore have a dignity. And so that was one thing where the Greeks kind of got it. They understood these things were important. They didn't understand that they were important for every human because of how we were created and by whom we were created. Okay, so Athens, education, learning, beauty. They created so many beautiful things, art, poems, stories, plays. Okay, and they also gave us a form of government and that government is called democracy. And for 100 years, they had what's called a direct democracy. And that means anything that had to happen that needed a vote, every single citizen got a vote. So it would be like if DMA needed to do a new lunch routine, if we were a democracy, every child would get one vote. Now in Athens, you could only be a citizen if you're a boy, and only a boy who was born in Athens, and only a boy born in Athens whose parents were both from Athens. So there are a lot of rules, but the citizens all got one vote. And that lasted for 100 years, and it's shaped who we are in the United States because we have a republic, which is taking a democracy and changing it to make it more manageable, okay? But this is another gift that the Athenians gave us. So, I want you to think about body, mind, and soul. Which parts of that the Athenians focused on? Definitely the mind and definitely the soul. They knew that beautiful things shape who we are, so they focused on the mind and the soul. Now we're gonna switch gears to another city-state, and I'm going to show you where these two are on a map. So, here is Athens. Can you see this? Up here. And right now we're gonna go down here and talk about Sparta. Now Sparta was not ruled in a democracy and it was not ruled in a monarchy with a king. They had an oligarchy and that oligarchy was all warriors. So it was men who had been warriors and were older who would rule the city of Sparta. Okay, now all men in Sparta were trained from the age of seven to be warriors. So when you were seven years old, Think about that, that's first grade boys. You would go to live apart from your family with all the soldiers and you would be training from then on to be a warrior, okay? Um, other city states wouldn't start boys until they were 18, but that's because the military was not important to them like it was to the Spartans. So they were considered the strongest city state. They were tough people and even the girls learned to fight. The men lived in their barracks, so that's a big group for soldiers. And even if you got married and had a family, you wouldn't live with your family. You would live in the barracks until you were done being a soldier. The women, after they were taught to fight, would stay home and protect the home. So this is part of why they were taught to fight. The men were often off fighting battles, and the women would have to stay behind and protect the home. Women also in Sparta had a lot more freedom than other places in the ancient world, including the rest of Greece, because if the men were away fighting, they had to run the businesses and keep things going. So the women had more freedom in Sparta. They did not have beautiful art there. They did not create a lot of stories or have a lot of plays, but when it came time to fight, the other city-states would call on Sparta as their partner because they were the best fighters. So they were all about strength and discipline. No matter what happened, you were disciplined. And if we think body, mind, and soul, the Spartans very much focused on the body. Okay, we're gonna wrap up for today, but I want you to think to your city-state that you created either by yourself or in your family. It should have a name. It should have a form of government. Now you need to start thinking about what will be important in your city-state, okay? What will you focus on in your city state. You have two models so far. You could be like Athens, art, beauty, knowledge, or you could be like Sparta and focus on strength. Or you could try to find a way to blend those things, but you're not gonna get to choose them all. All right, that's it for today. I will see you guys tomorrow. Oh, we need to pray though. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. And let's pray again to St. Michael for his protection of body and soul during this time. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Immaculate heart of Mary, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, guys. See you tomorrow.